Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Talking about El Muerte de Nueva New York. El Muerte of New York City under the communist de Blasio, who honors a convicted terrorist in the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Welcome to the Savage Nation. And I'm going to ask you a question. It's a question that affects the nation. It's very simple. Should Puerto Rico become a state? I'm very clear on it. Well, let me answer it to you this way since many of you are brain dead, or as brain dead as Mayor de Blasio. Uh, You want to give Puerto Rico two senators? Do you think that they will be far left, center, or far right? Do you want to give Puerto Rico seven Congress people? You think they're going to be leftists and push the leftist, socialist, Islamist agenda? Or do you think they're going to push the American agenda? And while we're talking about Puerto Rico, what a beautiful place it is. What a great place it is where a third of the population of Puerto Rico gets food stamps. One third of the population that was in 2012, God knows what it is today. One third of the population is on food stamps, probably much higher after eight years um, of Obama. Food stamps to Puerto Rico. Now, the employment rate in uh, Puerto Rico is very interesting. And what is the unemployment rate in Puerto Rico? The U.S. Congress gave Puerto Rico a short-term Medicaid payment of $300 million um, this year. That's a short-term payment. Puerto Rico has $70 billion in debt, a 45% poverty rate, unemployment rate twice that of the United States. Who would want to give Puerto Rico statehood other than Charles Schumer? Other than Charles Schumer. Now, let's go back to the Puerto Rican Day Parade which occurred over the weekend, how the victims of this terrorist, Oscar whatever his name is, Oscar Lopez Rivera, who served 36 years in prison for being the mastermind of bombings and terrorist events. And who do you think commuted his sentence? Barry the Snake Obama. Barry the Snake Obama commuted Lopez Rivera's sentence in January of this year. He was the leader of the FALN. What is the FALN? Consider them the PLO of Puerto Rico. That's who they are. The group's deadliest attack was in 1975 at the Francis Tavern in New York City, which killed four people, including Frank Connor, who was only 33 years of age at the time. I saw his son Joe Connor on Fox News about how outraged he is that de Blasio and the communists in the Puerto Rican community would march this character at the front of their parade. Joe Connor said Oscar Lopez wanted to enslave the Puerto Rican people into another Cuba. Now, of course, there was good news to this Puerto Rican Day Parade, which is that half of its corporate sponsors dropped out as a result of this terrorist being put into the, uh, the parade on the float. Governor Andrew Cuomo stepped out at the last minute. The NYPD police commissioner, James O'Neill, boycotted the parade. Hispanic police groups dropped out. And yet, the parade organizers stood by glorifying this terrorist. This National Freedom Hero Award, by the way, was never given to anybody in this parade. Did you hear what I just said? They made up a new award for this terrorist that Obama commuted the sentence of. Now, how deceitful was Obama? Just for a moment, I have to go off script of my own script for a moment. Obama makes believe he was a man of the people, a man of the terrorist, a man of the downtrodden. Obama just got a $70, $70 million advance for a book, him and his wife, two books. 
70 million. He just spent holidays on private islands in the Caribbean, everywhere you could name it, millionaires and billionaires are his best friends. When are you stupid people going to wake up to the fact that these liberal demagogues are not your friends, they are your puppet masters? So I'm asking you a simple question. Do you want or do you think Puerto Rico should be given citizenship? I'm very clear on it. You will have to be a lunatic to make Puerto Rico a state, not a citizenship, and that's in sorry statehood. You want to give everyone in Puerto Rico citizenship? What do we gain from it? It's a basket case. It is a basket case of a population. What would we gain by it? We'd gain seven congressmen who would be far left. we gain two senators who would make Chuck Schumer look like a conservative Republican. That's question number one in the Savage Nation. Number two. Number two, McCain. Do you think McCain should be removed from the Senate because of his clear and present senility? The man is crazy. Anti-Trump Senator John McCain, he's supposedly a Republican, according to the article I'm reading on Breitbart, and I'm pretty sure it's correct because it was also reported in other papers, he told a left-wing newspaper that McCain now believes American leadership was better under Obama than under Trump. Now, this man is either senile or a Benedict Arnold, one or the other, but I think he should be removed. I guess you can't remove a Benedict Arnold. Now, what about Nancy Pelosi? Should Nancy Pelosi be removed for senility? I'm going to play a soundbite for you to show you how sick our Congress has become when you've got a Nancy Pelosi who confuses President Trump with President Bush and continues on her script as though nothing happened. And I'm asking you again, should Pelosi be removed? And I don't know if the 25th Amendment applies to her, but it could apply to her and McCain. A lot of the left-wingers are now banding about, oh, remove Trump under the 25th Amendment. They're all repeating the same. They're reading the same immigraph sheet put out by the Democrat Party. Well, I would apply this to Nancy Pelosi and John McCain. Should Pelosi be removed according to the fact that she's mentally deranged? Listen to her confusing again, Trump with Bush, in clip one. New Yorkers have said to me, those who've had business dealings with him, he operates this way. First, he tries to charm you. President Bush tries to charm you. If that doesn't work, Trump. he tries to bully you. If that so doesn't the reporter work, says Trump, and she doesn't even, she doesn't miss a beat. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know why. So, you're... charm, bully, abandon, sue. I guess that's her M.O. over in San Francisco. That's how she got where she is and stays where she is. Charm, bully, abandon, and sue. Very clever, Nancy. But when you confuse President Trump with President Bush, not for the first time, people are asking, is it time for you to hang up your shingle and go home and practice your meatballs or your lasagna or whatever it is you might do? Global warming. Maybe write essays on global warming for sixth graders in San Francisco. Now, I'm asking again, statehood for Puerto Rico, yes or no? Getting a lot of callers on it. Let's play a little more El Gran Combo, one of my favorite groups from when I was very into this music. By the way, don't think this is bashing Puerto Rican people. It's bashing the idiocy of making Puerto Rico a state. Love the music, great energy. Play it louder. El Muerte. El Muerte. America is like the El Muerte. Morto. Morto. America's El Morto. The living dead, the night of the living dead. You gotta hear this music in person to understand how great it is. And it helps if you're stoned a little bit too, and you're 17 and stupid. All right, you get the point. Okay, here's what else I'm gonna do today, if that's not enough for you. It's Monday, I'm trying to wake you up. It's like the night of the living dead out there. Should Puerto Rico become a state pro and con? Do you think Pelosi and McCain should be removed from the Senate on the 25th Amendment if it could be applied to senators? Of course you do. Uh, I'm going to review the Jerry Lewis movie that no one watched, Max Rose. I watched it over the uh, last week in L.A. in a house because I'm a fan of Jerry Lewis. I think he's a great actor. 91 years old, he's still performing. He's a great inspiration to me. The movie is very slow, very maudlin, very sad. But I want to review it for a moment because it's worth talking about how someone can still perform so uh, adeptly at age 91. It's a real inspiration to me. And then I'm going to read the winners of the Savage Scholarship Prize. As you know, I got no publicity for this because I'm not a communist and only communists uh, get uh, press in America. 
Uh, I got no publicity for the fact that I gave away $100,000 to five very lucky students, 20000 each. I should have given them 5000 each and made it 20 people, but I gave away 20000 to five people, much too much money. But nevertheless, I did it, I did it, I did it. They got twenty grand for two years of college, and I asked them to send me an essay about how this $20,000 gift from the Savage Scholarship Fund changed their lives. I'm going to read you some of those today on the Savage Show. And if that's not enough for you, then I suggest you tune into a radio show that's talking about legalistic things they know nothing about. You've got more high school dropouts in the media now talking about law than you could ever imagine. People who never graduated high school who are suddenly experts on the Constitution and on legalistic things. It's astounding to me why you, why you listen to this because I can't. And I'm not taking it anymore. If you think I'm going to sit here and listen to this crap and tell you I think it's wonderful, I think you're insane. Why are you letting the lawyers run this country? Why are you letting the lawyers run the television networks? Since when do Americans care what these criminal bums with law degrees think and do? I don't. So I want to talk about statehood for Puerto Rico. I want to talk about whether or not McCain and Pelosi should be removed under the 25th or something like it that applies to the Senate, a review of the movie, and so much more I can't even begin to tell you about it. So, Robert, let's have a little more El Gran Combo. I'll take my break. I'll come back to the calls that are flooding in to the great Savage Nation radio show. Aquí, ahora, on the Savage Nation. Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Any more of this. Any more of this from the for vermin in the media. You may as well get the coffin out for the country if you let the Jake Tappers and the Wolf Blitzes and the New York Times and the Washington Post owned by Amazon Bezos, the beast of Amazon, you let them keep it up, America will be put into a coffin. I'm sick of it all. Now they want to make Puerto Rico a state? Are you out of your mind? You want to give them two senators to the left of uh, Nancy Pelosi? You want to give them seven congressmen to the left of... Uh, Oscar Lopez Rivera to the left of the dead Fidel Castro, you idiots, you. Play the music. I shouldn't even talk today. It's so obvious. There's not even a question worthy of discussion. That's all. I'll just play music today. But no one likes Latin music but me. That's the problem. You know what people listen to? Ariana Grande. Can you believe it? That's a popular song. A songstress. All right, so... Let's look at it from the point of view of why people are arguing that Puerto Rico should be made a state. Well, duh, if you're a welfare state and the people are on un- unemployment, they don't work, 50% of them or near, near that amount, of course they want to become a state. Not only will they get welfare, uh, increased benefits that they already, buy, by the way, they get the benefits right now. Oh, yeah, food stamps, you name it. You have any idea what kind of numbers get food stamps over there in Puerto Rico? Now, you want to increase welfare payments to them in Puerto Rico, and you want to give them statehood so they can get a senator, two senators, and seven congressmen and vote themselves a raise? Are you people crazy? So what do we need Puerto Rico for? Ask yourself that question. Let's say we cut it off completely as a territory. Say goodbye. You're free. You want independence? All of you Oscar Lopez Rivera's, you want an independent nation? God bless you. Make an independent nation. Become another Cuba in the Caribbean. And let's see how the people fare under you. Let's see how they would fare, the Puerto Rican people, under a communist as they are faring, for example, in Cuba, as they are faring in South America. Have you forgotten what's going on in the north of South America? You forgot what's going on down there? In Venezuela, they're fighting over a salami. They're killing zoo animals for food because your socialism is so wonderful. You know, I keep hearing young people who are stupid dumber than you've ever seen talk about socialism with stars in their eyes because they've never visited these states, uh, these nations that are run by socialists. 
And then I realized something in bed last night. Socialism cannot work in a nation full of lazy people. And that goes for most nations on earth. What you don't understand, most of you don't understand this, is that man is inherently a lazy animal. I don't think you understand it. This is not a racial thing. It's not a a gender thing. It's not a gay thing. It's not a straight thing. So put away your hatred for a minute. Man is by nature lazy. He'd rather do nothing and collect a check for doing nothing. He'd like to sit home, drink alcohol, smoke marijuana, do drugs, go to a dance at night. In other words, do nothing. Just be lazy. That's what man would like to do. Most men are lazy. Anywhere on earth, they sit around doing nothing. That's what the third world is, is in addition to struggling for food, they they do nothing with themselves. So if you apply socialism or give them the opportunity to have socialism, of course they'll say yes. They want all of the money that the people who are creative and productive produce to be given to them. And then they don't understand they'll wind up eating themselves and have nothing left. As Margaret Thatcher said, socialism is a wonderful system. Wonderful indeed until you run out of other people's money. But you can't explain that to a stoner in his 20s. They have no idea what the real world is like. They spent the last six years in college living on their mother's couch, getting stoned, chasing sex, and they know nothing about the real world. Then they go out to get a job, and they don't get a job because they have no, no skills whatsoever. So what do they do? They blame race. They blame sex. They blame this. They blame that. But it's because they have no marketable skills. Nobody wants a deadbeat in their, in their corporation. You don't even want them working for you in a delicatessen. They can't even make a sandwich right. They get, they get fumbled up. You ask them to put corned beef on a, on a piece of bread, and the corned beef winds up on the floor, and the mustard is on, in their hair. Then they go home crying. Then they scream they want socialism. That's what's coming out of the colleges today. They don't understand that socialism is loved by people who are lazy bums because they get something for nothing. So now you've got it. Let's take it back to the Puerto Rican parade, if you don't mind. Oscar Lopez Rivera. A terrorist convicted of uh, many, many things, transporting firearms, seditious conspiracy against the U.S. government, sentenced to 70 years in prison. Obama commutes his sentence in January because Obama loves communist terrorists. You know what I'm saying? You know how you get that one? Leader of the FALN. The question is, the parade was an embarrassment to New Yorkers, even of the Puerto Rican people themselves. They embarrassed themselves. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. It's Puerto Rican music. I happen to like it. I mean, I like El Gran Combo. I don't particularly care for that song. It's hard to find anyone else I like other than Tito Rodriguez and such. And we'll play them later on. But the real issue is the politics of what's going on out here. When they take a terrorist who was whose sentence was computed by the, the um, questionable president, Barack Obama, and they put him in the head of a parade by giving him a phony award for the Puerto Rican parade that was never given to anybody. And half of its corporate sponsors drop out. Governor Cuomo drops out, NYPD drops out, FDNY drops out, and then the parade organizers take this terrorist and put him on a, on a hero uh, float. It's unbelievable that the city of New York has fallen into the hands of left-wing fanatics on the Mayo de Blasio, Mayo de Blasio, Mayo de Blasio. When you actually analyze what would happen if the left-wing took over New York City, you would have not only terrorism and mayhem, you'd have starvation. New York City would become uh, like uh, Caracas, Venezuela, where people are fighting over a zoo animal. You have to kill zoo animals to eat down there because of socialism. But that doesn't stop Mayor de Blasio from espousing his communism. It doesn't stop stupid people from saying Puerto Rico should be a state without adding up the cost and what it would do to the country here, this country. New York City was just shocked yesterday that they they honored a convicted terrorist. And so this is a story, and it's not for the three hours. It's for another little segment of the show. I want to take some calls on it. 
WSBA, Danny, you you say statehood would be a good thing for who? Uh, for Puerto Rico, for Puerto Ricans to be be a state. Okay, and what does America gain from Puerto Rico as a state? Okay, uh, Puerto Ricans have been fighting in the wars of the United States. Wait, wait, no, no, excuse me. What would America gain if Puerto Rico become a state? Let, let's put aside your love for the Puerto Rican people. I appreciate that. What would America gain making uh, Puerto Rico a state? Well, with all due respect, I'm born and raised in New York City, the Bronx, and what the United States, what we would gain is faith, because the United States cannot go around the world spending billions of dollars promoting democracy when they have a territory, which over here we call a colony, which is basically the same thing. Over. No, I, under I understand all the sentiments on this. I think Puerto Rico should be given independence and let the terrorists take it over. Is that something you think is a good thing? Do you, do you think Puerto Rico would do better if it, was, if it was a free nation under its own as the terrorist who was on it in the parade wanted? He wanted freedom and independence for the island of Puerto Rico or the islands of Puerto Rico. Tell me if that would be a good thing for the Puerto Rican people. No, because in Puerto Rico, less than 3% of Puerto Ricans want independence. Well, of course they don't want independence. Uh, uh, w would you want independence if your gravy train was cut off? Well, how, how would the Puerto Rican people in Puerto Rico support themselves if the United States cut them off and said you're free to become an independent nation, and then they made the president the guy in the parade, Oscar or whatever? They make Oscar Rivera the president of the new free Puerto Rico. Tell me what would happen in Puerto Rico. The first thing they would probably do is grab him by his belt and kick him in the butt and get him out of here because 99% of Puerto Ricans are totally against this character, especially uh, what he did in that parade. So why is it that Mayor de Blasio and the other communists on the city council put this man in the parade and made him a hero? What do you think that was about? What message was de Blasio sending to New Yorkers and the world? Well, the de Blasio is a leftist. We, everybody knows that. And this is sort of poking the United States in the eye, you know, giving a, a Puerto Rico a bad rep. But Puerto Ricans on this island are not leftists and, and certainly not far left. I would say it's evenly divided between okay. the pro-state... The pro right, well, you're speaking from the point of view of a man. Are you, you're born in the U.S., but you say you know Puerto Rico very well, Yes. Yes, I, I guess so. I think I could say that. All right. Well, it's a fair-minded statement that you have made thus far. My position is quite clear. This terrorist that de Blasio and the others on the city council honored in the parade was fighting by blowing people up and blowing things up to free Puerto Rico from the grip of the United States, the greater imperialistic oppressor, so to speak. And I would say if they were to have Puerto Rico in their hands, they would destroy it. The people would starve to death. That's exactly why we don't... And you would have torture chambers like Castro created in Cuba. They tur would turn it into an early Cuba. There'd be massive um, executions, prison camps, starvation. The people would suffer greatly. The question, though, my good friend, is how does the United States benefit from making Puerto Rico a state? I see it as a deficit, not an asset. I, I see no doubt... Puerto Rico would be the, the the greater benefactor of this. But I go back okay. to what I stated before, Dr. Savage. The United States goes around the world speaking about the democracy and fairness, and they have 3.5 million people living in a colony, which have no, don't have, they don't have two senators, which you mentioned before, and they don't have any representation. You know, it's, it's so totally... Unfair. But they're doing pretty good without representation. They get a lot of food stamps. They get a lot of welfare. They don't need representation. They have the Democrat Party. What more do they need? But that's the point I'm trying to make, Dr. Savage. Well, what, what do they need representation for? Can they do even better under a representative? How much more money can they take from the taxpayer? Look, here's the problem. Danny, your sentiments are intellectually appealing and correct. But the realities of it, who is going to pay for this? That's the problem, Danny. Certain things sound like they should be done or are good. They sound good on paper. But someone has to pay the tab, and that's the taxpayer again. So I disagree with you, Danny, but you're a super respectful, very intelligent caller. 
And I certainly love having a discussion with people who disagree with me who have the civility and intelligence that Danny on WSBA just had. So I'm going to send you a special gift, and it's not a hair implant or a toupee. Danny, I'll send you a copy of Teddy and Me. I'll tell you what, I'll throw in Trump's war as well. I'm going to give you two books for the price of one, zero. I think we should move on. I know this is a great time. I knew it. I have this sixth sense in radio of what the rest. Look, it's, the, it's a topic that's so important to us because the New York City uh, landscape is not unto itself. This is an international story, how they would march a known terrorist in a parade. What if the Italian American Day parade was held and they put the late mafia Don John Gotti on a float? Would most Italians march down the street with them? Or let's, I'm going to say something controversial now. I've got to be a little careful. Let's see, what other uh, ethnicities have parades? The Irish, the Irish, the St. Paddy's Day parade. What if at the height of the IRA bombings, the Irish Day parade, the St. Paddy's Day parade, took the leader of Sinn Féin, if I pronounced it correctly, and I hope I did, and put him in the top of the parade. Now, there are arguments to be made that they are freedom fighters in Ireland, by the way. If you would ask me which side I'm on, I think the British are a horrible people for what they did to Ireland, personally. And I personally think Ireland should be an independent nation, but no one's asking my opinion. I'm only a talk show host. But you take a convicted FALN leader like Oscar Lopez Rivera, who was 35 years behind bars for his ties to the group, He's commuted by the terrorist president himself, the last terrorist president we had, who disguised himself as a man of the people, then cashes in a $70 million book advance. He gets, what, $400,000 a speech, hangs out at Necker Island with the richest people on earth, pr flies on private jets, and you people buy the crap that he's a man of the people. I, what are you on, Crackalandia? You come from Crackalandia? I don't know what country you people live in. You have such distorted views of right and wrong. And who's on your side? I don't understand how poor people can become stupid. Not all poor people are stupid, by the way. I came from poor people who were very smart. They didn't have opportunity, and they never got lucky in this country. It doesn't mean they were stupid. Let me tell you that right now. The point is, is that you don't have to go to college to be intelligent. And I've seen real intelligence amongst uneducated people. Just listen to talk radio all day long. You can see that in any, any way you turn. You got high school dropouts who are posing as experts in everything in the world. And uh, that's unto itself shows you how smart they are. It's astounding what they can get away with. But having said that, look at what people would vote for in this country if they're given an opportunity. Okay, so I think we've covered the world music thing here. I'm going to take a few more callers on this. Let's get some callers out of New York City now. Uh, Bobby on WABC Line 4, you are in favor of statehood for Puerto Rico. Why? Dr. Savage, I respect you greatly, but you're wrong on this one. I'm in favor for statehood for one reason. I come from a military family of individuals with medals of honor who have not only suffered in war, have died in war, right? So what would the United States gain? It would not only gain a strong people that's worthy enough to be in the front lines of war. We can finally vote for a president. That's the first thing. The second thing is the contributions to the cultural society that we give. All right, you can just look at the number one song in the world right now, Despacito. The whole world is listening to it. So the United States would gain tremendously, not only warriors. I get, I get all of the. Listen, no one has to tell me about the machismo and pride of the Puerto Rican male. I happen to know that the, the number one ethnic group who have received medals of honor happen to be Hispanic in origin. You know that, correct? I do know that, Dr. Sam. Not all from Puerto Rico, but certainly some from Puerto Rico. But Hispanic people are phenomenal warriors. Everybody knows that. Well, I'm talking about... I, ap I appreciate that, Bobby, but my question is a little different, which is how do we pay for this? You know, you know what? That's a great question. That's the million-dollar question that nobody can answer. Right. All right. Well, so that's why I brought it up. See, anyone could say Oscar Lopez Rivera shouldn't have been on it in a parade. That's easy. That's that's baby talk. We all know that. But the next question is about statehood for Puerto Rico, because that's what he was fighting for. He was not fighting for statehood. He and his terrorist friends were fighting for independence. They wanted their own nation. They wanted to become another communist outpost in the Caribbean. They wanted to become another Cuba. You know that, correct? But let me t let me just mention quickly, Dr. Savage, on Oscar Lopez and the left wings in New York. All the people that are against them, when you point fingers, there's always three fingers pointing on against you. You know what? The NYPD and all these other elected officials, 
They're involved up to their necks in corruption. They're the last people that should be pointing in fingers. Just take a look at all the investigations going on in New York City. Well, now, now you're smearing the police department on wait on on very with a broad brush with nothing specific. I don't know what that has to do with Puerto Rican statehood. The question is, the NYPD dropped out of the parade. You don't think they should have marched in it, do you? I guess he hung up. I guess uh, you're only allowed three minutes in the prison. I, I don't know what it is today. I thought it was two minutes in the past. You drop the dime on the in the machine there, and you get a couple of calls. All right. You know, there's a related topic I want to talk about. I don't know much about it, but I want to talk about it because it's a cultural phenomenon that I was not aware of until last Thursday. And I pride myself on seeing trends and whatnot. I was watching a movie on narco-terrorism coming out of Mexico in, in Spanish now. It's subtitled. I'm not that good in Spanish. I studied it for siete años. It doesn't mean I'm fluent. It's a tough language for anybody. You know, linguistics are hard. You, know, you laugh at people who don't speak English well, but try speaking their language for two minutes. My father taught me that almost slapped me in the face once. I was in his market in New York uh, in uh, Ludlow Street. You know, at the time, it was a poor neighborhood. God knows what the property's worth today. So I stood there, and a guy comes in, and he speaks in broken English, but he was, you know, kind of literate. So when he left, I was a kid. I said, hey, look, he doesn't speak English, does he? Pretty good, Dad. You know, he looks at me, he says, he speaks English better than you speak his language, doesn't he? That shut me up pretty quickly. The point I'm making is, if you look at cultures and you see the, the trends of these cultures, certain things can be learned in advance. It's like investing in real estate before it becomes big. You know, there was a time in the 50s that nobody wanted to live in the Hamptons. What was it? Sleepy fishing villages. Then the artists from New York ran out there. Uh, can name him Rothko and the others, I guess. And they started painting in these little converted shacks. They bought a couple of acres. Well, I do have to tell you what the land is worth today. But artists always lead the trend of where people go, whether it's in a city, they move into crappy neighborhoods, pardon me, uh, slums, and they gentrify them, and then suddenly the, the prices go through the roof. So you look at cultural phenomena in the same way in order to see what's coming. So here what I, here's what I'm talking about. So I watched this movie in Spanish, as I say, very... It, well, I don't remember the name exactly, but it was about narco, not so much the narco terrorism, although that was the, the prominent, the dominant theme of the movie, but it was about the narco corridos, the songs of the um, cartels in Mexico. And I was watching this with fascination to learn that most of the Mexican drug cartels have their favorite singers who sing their praises going about not only the countryside to great big concerts, but in America, in different cities, they have narcos corridos, and they have very popular songs amongst the Mexican-American population. So you see men and women going to these dances, Atlanta, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, and you see them singing along songs such as, we are bloodthirsty, we want to carve your heart out, and saying, what? You see ordinary people singing these songs. i got to talk about that for a minute and what it portends for the future of this nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. back, I read a comparison of Russian crimes along with the Democrats who were involved with them. This piece was written by Liz Wheeler, host of the show Tipping Point on One America News Network. When my staff gave me the piece, I did not have the name of the person who wrote it, but it is no surprise that it was written by Liz Wheeler, whose show is fantastic. I'm planning to have Liz on the Savage Nation in the near future. When we have a firm date and time, I will announce it on the air. No había acabado de hablar. So the question for this first hour sort of has been one thing, which is um, should Puerto Rico become a state based upon what went on in the parade? And I thought it was a very good conversation. Maybe we'll carry a little bit over the next top, uh, next hour. But, you know, not directly related in any way is this movie I saw, a documentary on the devastation in Mexico from the uh, narco-terrorists, and it shows a... Um, you see um, El Paso on one side of the border where the murder rate was five murders the whole year. And on the other side, there's a Mexican city that was once very prosperous. 
It is now a ghost town. People stay in the houses because all the businesses closed up because of extortion and murder. The kids are afraid to go out in the street. The devastation that's being wrought in Mexico is, of course, driving a lot of the illegal immigration into America, if you want to see the whole big picture. But concomitant with that was the glorification of the narco-terrorists with a subgenre of music called the narco-corrido. And I want to talk about how they go back as far as the Mexican Revolution of 1910. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. We are listening to the ballads of Puerto Rico. I know many of you don't like Latin music. I happen to enjoy it. And it's not about the music so much today. It's about statehood for Puerto Rico because of the parade they had in New York putting a terrorist on the uh, on the float there. It's a very controversial subject. I think we've covered it to a certain great extent, or a great extent in the first hour. But I'll take a few more calls on do you think Puerto Rico should become a state? I am totally opposed to it because of one reason, and that reason is money. We are a bankrupt nation. We are broke. And uh, you can blame anybody you want, but we don't need any more welfare recipients. It's that simple. It may sound crude, but who is going to pay for this new state of Puerto Rico? We don't need two new uh, left-wing senators, which they would get, and seven new Congress people, which will all be to the left, I can guarantee you. So I don't understand why you'd even talk about it. Now you could say, well, we owe, owe it to them because uh, we've taken this from Puerto Rico or that. But the, the convicted terrorist, Oscar Rivera, who was put on a float on Fifth Avenue in New York City because of Mayor the Commie de Blasio, should be the last thing uh, that you think about before you even make a decision on this. Why would you want to glorify a communist state like this in America? Why would you want to glorify a man who wanted an absolute communist dictatorship for his people in Puerto Rico? I don't understand it unless you are brain damaged. I think that the Puerto Rican Day Parade, which happened, uh, shouldn't have happened like it did yesterday. He was not a freedom fighter, and I've heard the arguments on both sides of the aisle. Oh, everyone's a freedom fighter. It depends on which side you're on. Tell that to the victims uh, in New York City. Now, on the other hand, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, and they are American citizens who are in bankruptcy. Unfortunately for us, we pick up the tab here in America, and I think that that's all that needs to be said on it. The bigger issue for me is how we're going to deal with these aging, senile senators like Pelosi and McCain. Now, it's another sensitive topic that we dare not discuss in America, which is early-onset senility. It doesn't have to be absolute Alzheimer's for a person to have early-onset senility. There is no question in my mind, as an amateur looking in from the outside, that McCain is senile. He shows all of the signs of pre-senile dementia, I would say Pelosi has a high probability of brain malfunction in the form of medically, my guess. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because they're attacking Trump, saying he's unfit to be president, remove him under the 25th Amendment, which is totally ludicrous. That's something only the midget at Berkeley could come up with this guy, this out-of-work uh, labor secretary, Robert Reich. If you actually looked into Robert Reich's background over at Berkeley, a man who does nothing but collect a fat check for teaching children the wonders of socialism. Uh, look into the background of Robert Reich uh, and his lovely wife and see if they've ever sued to gain tenure anywhere in their long history in academia. And you'll come to understand how leftists operate. They say one thing and do another. They put down the system that they live off. So now we come back to the issue at hand here. The issue is the glorification of socialism, uh, which is a wonderful system for lazy people, but not a wonderful system for productive people. We, the productive people of America, provide all the money for the entire nation. 
And without us, you'd have nothing. You'd be eating ostriches from the zoo if it wasn't for us, the producers of this country. But again, going back to Pelosi, she mixed up Trump with Bush, and this is not the first time. And then you got McCain, a complete and total Benedict Arnold, who I think should be removed under, under any um, statute that says you can remove someone for being mentally unfit. Nancy Pelosi, 77, that's not too old. But the woman is clearly showing signs, in my opinion, of early onset senility. She was arguing that Trump was losing his mind, and she said that he was Bush. That's after saying he was losing his mind. That's the latest argument coming out of the left-wing establishment. From the top to the bottom, they all read the same mimeograph sheet. Oh, remove him under the 25th, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we know what that's about. Let's see what else is in the news. George Soros has a son. His son is Alex Soros. In my opinion, if Alex did not have a father like George, Alex would be serving coffee in a coffee house in the East Village if he could hold on to that job. But that did not stop up Chuck Schumer, Bigfoot Schumer, from having drinks with George Soros' son. Now, why is that? Money. Just follow the money. According to finance records, campaign finance records, Alex Soros, the son of Frankenstein Soros, gave more than $4.5 million to Democratic campaign committees and PACs in 2016, of which the Senate Majority PAC uh, of Senator Harry Reid was the largest benefactor with checks totaling 3.5 mil. Of the four and a half mil, $127,000 went to the Democrat Senatorial Campaign Committee. Well, I don't have to read you all the numbers. In other words, this rich man's son, Alex Soros' son, the guy who made his fortune on betting against companies, the guy who made his fortune by betting against currencies, in other words, an all-around speculator of the worst order, has a son who uh, gives out a lot of money. And he gives money to people like who? Hillary Clinton, Keith Ellison, and of course, uh, Chuck Schumer, who we had a drink with. Nothing wrong with it. It's not illegal, but it gives you an example of another phony out there who says, oh, yeah, you save it for the poor. Here's another story out of Sweden. Those of you who love Muslims and Islam, sex attacks at Swedish festivals have risen 1,000%. And you see moronic liberals standing there out there saying, welcome refugees in Italy now. Italy's taking them in by the tens of thousands when their unemployment rate is through the roof. The poor, the poor young people in Italy have no jobs. They're bringing in boatloads of immigrants from Africa, mainly from Libya. Now, I want to talk about that for a minute. Who was it who ordered the assassination of Gaddafi, the strongman of Libya? Well, remember the tape. I have an answer for that question as well. It's the brain that never sleeps. It was Hillary Clinton, I think, who was involved with a little bit of that regime change. And after she whacked Gaddafi or had her friends whack Gaddafi, she had a little cocktail party with her girlfriends where she said, we came, <laughs> we saw, he died. <laughs> and all the girls laugh. It's not a laughing matter. Because before Gaddafi, Muhammad Gaddafi was whacked by the United States government, he begged this government not to kill him for one good reason. Of course, he wanted to live. But he said, I warn you, if you kill me, you will destroy whatever stability is left of this nation of Libya, and it will descend into the chaos of a Somalia where warlords will rule the nation. That is exactly what has happened because of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. That is exactly why tens of thousands of Africans are flooding into Europe. This entire refugee crisis was created by the misguided insanity of the, of the illiberal left. Now you got the rest of that story. So I could put the dots together, and I often try to do it for you on the show in different ways. So there it is. Now you understand where the refugees are coming from and why they're flowing into Europe. That's all. Now we'll go back to the other question. New York Times is advising parents how to raise feminist boys. Tension Puerto Ricans. Because I don't think this is going to play very well in the Hispanic communities. Something tells me that the Puerto Rican families don't want to raise feminist boys. A little birdie tells me that the Mexican-American families would rather their sons be macho rather than a feminist. But that did not stop the pinko New York Times from glorifying the new, quote, pink economy. And so they reached out to rabid man maniacs in the women's movement, so-called, and they want to raise the boys more like daughters. And here is rabid feminist Gloria Steinem was quoted as saying, I'm glad we've begun to raise our daughters more like our sons. 
but it will never work until we raise our sons more like our daughters. Hmm. Isn't that brilliant? That's just what the nation needs, is the feminization of more men in the United States of America. That's the beginning of the show. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Uh, the president's fitness for office is something that has been called into question. It takes a certain curiosity to learn the facts, to base your comments on evidence and data and truth. It takes a certain discipline to be able to prioritize what is important uh, uh, as we try to bring the country together. Uh, and it takes a, a, some kind of stamina to keep your thoughts together. Uh, and well, I, I, I'm very worried about his fitness. All right. Now, you talk about the, the cuckoo clock calling the grandfather clock uh, uh, off beating here. This woman is off the charts. Now, you want to see what else is crazy. The Trump administration floated an amnesty idea for one million illegal immigrants last week. Did you hear me? Oh, yeah. Homeland Security Secretary John F. Kelly, a far leftist, by the way, was sympathetic to granting amnesty to 780,000 dreamers from deportation. This is the head of our Homeland Security Department. He is further to the left than the other clown who ran Homeland Security under Obama. Kelly told the House Homeland Security Committee that he wants to keep 780,000 so-called dreamers from deportation, and he hoped that Congress would grant them permanent status. Now, with friends like him, we don't need leftist enemies. I've never seen anything like this. How in the world did Trump appoint this man to Homeland Security is, is beyond me, is what I want to say. You know, I think the world has gone insane, by the way. I don't know anything that's running right anymore. It was bad enough suffering under Obama's lies for eight straight years. And phony boy through and through. Now we got Trump in there. And what have we gotten so far? And, and people are asking this every day. And I'll go back. Again, I, I know that there's such dissatisfaction with him, but you can't blame him entirely for the problems. You can blame the obstructionists in his own party, and you can blame the Democrats who are trying to tie his hands so he can't do anything. We understand that. He has done a few things. The unemployment rate is down. Jobs are up. I mean, that's a big thing, number one. I'm not here to glorify what he did. But what I'm saying to you is I want you to try for a moment to think of what this country, where it would be, if Hillary Clinton had won the election, three months or four months into this administration of Hillary Clinton, I'll tell you right now, things would not be as good as they are now. In, in a few areas, I'll give you one, two examples. The First Amendment was clearly in the targets, in her targets. In, she wanted the First Amendment controlled by the government. She wanted talk radio gone. She said so. Now, maybe you don't like what I happen to say, but I am an American citizen born here, and I have a right of free speech. I do not want my free speech impinged. If you do, you're a fascist and a Nazi. You're my enemy. Let me tell you that right now. I don't care what you, what you put on your body. I don't care what signs you wear on your bumper stickers. You're a Nazi, and you don't belong in my country, and I'll fight you to the end for that one. I will fight with everything I have for my First Amendment. She would have curtailed that not only in talk radio, she would have curtailed that in the Internet, on the Internet as well. She had the conservative sites on her hit list. So free speech would have been controlled. Now, what about your, your sacred guns? Second Amendment, all of you confused people out there. Hillary is a gun grabber. Hillary wants us disarmed. Hillary wants us as helpless as the French when the Muslim terrorists come to blow them up they have to run out of the back of the restaurant screaming for, uh, for God to save them, the God that they told to drop dead. God is silent because you drove him away. God is not going to save Europe because Europe drove God out of the churches. And the fact of the matter is, the Second Amendment is solid and safe under uh, President Trump, and it would not have been had Hillary Clinton won the presidency. So I'm going to start with one and two. Those are amendments one, amendments two. You have them. You're going to have them for the four to eight years that Trump is president. 
That's number one. I can go down the whole list of freedoms that we have that would have been curtailed or permanently muted under Hillary Clinton. But I think you can figure out where the rest of this narrative goes. If only you put on your thinking caps and not listen to the fools in the media who are lying to you on a daily basis. And now some callers on the issue of Puerto Rican statehood. This is only Monday. What am I getting so excited about? I'm getting so excited because the news and the uh, thoughts about the news are all so powerful. I mean, what we're living through is phenomenal when you think about it. I asked whether you think Puerto Rico should be granted statehood. And we're going to take a call now out of New York City. Jose on line one. Go ahead. What's your opinion, Jose? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Michael. Okay, I will not totally be satisfied they let Puerto Rico into, the, uh, in, uh, into our union. I'm in Puerto Rico. I am Puerto Rican, rather. And I could tell you history, starting with the first government governor that was elected by the people. Another common is like the guy that just let, they just let go out of jail. No different whatsoever. And do you want... Wait, so wait, I want to ask you something. You're, you're from Puerto Rico. Are you for or against statehood? I am against, against it totally. That will be the, that will be the disaster within to this country. You're going to let a country uh, that's into bankruptcy uh, to come to depend more because it's not the money. That's what I'm... I said that from the beginning. They're already bankrupt, so how could we afford this? No, it's not impossible. I mean, you, I mean, Puerto Rico, they don't deserve. They have you to earn the statehood. Puerto Ricans haven't earned the statehood yet. I, All right, you but, make your point very clear. I'm sending you a beautiful gift, the new fresh hardcover copy, not used, of Trump's war. I don't have any used ones yet. I get used ones. <laughs> not sending them to you on the Savage Nation. What else did I want to tell you about? In the middle of all of this, sometimes I take a break and go into some personal issues. I, oh, I haven't done this one yet. How about flying on Southwest from Los Angeles to San Francisco? Would you like to hear those stories? My God, the, it exhausted me. That one-hour flight took more out of me, that one hour on Southwest Airlines. Let me just break it down for you with one little tale. I get on the plane, flying, you know, all, all one price. I sit in the front row minding my business. I put the one carry-on over my head, again, trying to avoid being taped to the chair and arrested when I get off the plane. So before the plane takes off, I take my shoes off. They're, they're the type without laces. They slide off and on. I hate socks. I never wear them. I slide the shoes off to relax my feet. I'm not the type that puts the foot up, the foot up on the bulkhead. I take the shoes off, no big display, and put my feet on top of the shoe so I'm a little more relaxed. So she says to me, when you hear the bing go off and they're about to, okay, sir, could you please put your shoes on? I said, excuse me, what? She says, put your shoes on. I said, why? She said, it's a federal law. I said, why? It makes no sense to me. I saw the lights go off in her eyes. She had a live one already. She was ready to bring out the CO2 fire extinguisher and the tape. So I put the shoes on. The next thing she's mumbling to her cohort, the other beautiful stewardess, that regaled us with one of her stupid idiotic songs, when the plane landed, I almost vomited from it. What do they all think? They're stars on this airline. And she starts bumbling to her about the two, quote, bozos on the plane the day before. You talk about hatred for passengers? Try Southwest, the friendly skies of Southwest. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. and it's not good for Donald Trump, I'm sorry to say. Secret Service just said they have no Comey tapes. That's a huge story. Because as near as yesterday, Trump's lawyer was saying they're going to reveal very soon this week whether or not the president taped Comey conversations. Well, today, the United States Secret Service said it has no copies or transcripts of any White House tapes, even though President Trump insinuated he may have recorded conversations with Comey. Now, the agency, the Secret Service, has handled recording systems for all the past presidents, and they responded to a Freedom of Information Act request from the Wall Street Journal. Now, on May 12th, Trump wrote, Comey better hope there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. Well, as you know, last week, uh, the question about the tapes popped up again when Trump was asked whether he made any recordings. And here is what he said. 
I'll tell you about that maybe sometime in the very near future. Oh, you're going to be very disappointed when you hear the answer. Don't worry, said Trump during a news conference in the White House Rose Garden. On Monday, meaning today, spokesmouth Sean uh, Spicer reiterated Mr. Trump's comments by saying, quote, the president made clear in the Rose Garden last week that he would have an announcement shortly, said Spicer. Well, I think we got the answer already. There are no tapes, according to the Secret Service. Is that a good or a bad thing? What do I know about good or bad? All I know is that he made a statement like he had him and he didn't. That's all. You know, loose lips uh, sink more than ships. Let me put it to you that way. And it's time already to stop with the tweeting and the shooting from the hip. You know, I've said this before. I've been saying it for months. Stop the tweeting. It is not presidential. It's not thought out. It's not doing you any good. It's doing you more harm than good. I'll say it over and over and over. It's not going to stop him. He'll keep doing it anyway. That's what he does. He is who he is. That's how he got where he is. He figures he'll keep doing it and stay where he is. And I hope he does stay where he is. I only wish he'd stop tweeting. That's all. Now, another psychopathic left-wing appeals court here in the San Francisco area, the Ninth Circuit Court of Schlemiel's, uh, three, uh, three members of the, of the uh, uh, Schlemiel Court, again ruled against Trump's travel ban. Now, why they want more terrorists in this country is a matter of uh, question that only a psychiatrist could answer. Why would these three dunces on the Ninth Circuit Court of Schlemiel attack Trump again just to spite him? And say, no, no, we're keeping no, no travel ban. We like more illegal aliens from, from Syria. We want more illegal aliens from Libya. We want more illegal aliens from Somalia. We need more of them. Why do these Schlemiels want more of them? The answer is they don't even care. All they care about is they've got federal protection. They live in a bubble. They live on Pacific Heights, surrounded by Secret Service and Gates. They could care less about what happens to your nation. And that's why I say, as I've said for years, the stench from the bench is making me clench. And Trump should go ahead and break up the Ninth Circuit into two or three courts. It's outrageous that this small group of judges uh, rule over such a massive population in so many Western states. That Ninth Circuit was created when the West was uh, very, very thinly populated. And so it was for convenience that so much power was handed to a few of these lawyers in black robes. It's long overdue that that circuit be broken up into two or three other courts. That's a topic that I don't think you're ready to discuss, but I just brought it up because I could. Now it's time for a little fun on the program. Uh, I think this is the nice part. Um, about two years ago, I gave out $100,000 from the Savage Scholarship Fund with no reportage in any of the media. Uh, two five lucky college students. They got 20 grand each. And I have the essays from them, the new ones, where I ask them to tell me how the scholarship affected their lives. I can't read all of them, and I don't think I'm going to. I'll read one of them to start with from a Curtis Butterfield, one of the winners, in civil engineering at Boise State University. And he writes the following, Dear Michael Savage, I'm thankful for the opportunity to express again my appreciation for this generous gift. As you may recall, I am married and a father of five children and have decided to return to school for a change of careers. For the past four years, I've been attending Boise State while juggling schoolwork and family. My wife also takes her role as a mother very seriously. Therefore, we decided to keep her in the home to raise our children. We knew that this chapter of our lives would be very challenging. We did not want to jeopardize our children's upbringing by putting them in daycare. Yet we also knew that if I worked while in school, that graduation would take many additional years and my grades would suffer. We didn't know what to do. I have been a citizen of the Savage Nation for some time when I heard about your scholarship. I felt like I knew you intimately and, and I knew that we had a lot of similar beliefs. I guess you could say that I had an unfair advantage over other applicants. As I wrote my application essay, I felt like I could express my true feelings and that I would not be rejected because of my conservative beliefs. Surprisingly, among thousands of applicants, you selected my essay as a finalist. The excitement was overwhelming and brought me to tears as I realized that a prayer was answered. This scholarship had a great impact on my academic su success and subsequently my life. As a direct result, I could focus more of my time and energy on my studies. Since receiving the scholarship, I have made the dean's list twice at Boise State University's College of Engineering, maintained a 3.85 GPA, 
and have recently been accepted to work as an engineering intern at a prestigious international engineering firm. I'm also on track to graduate in the spring of 2018. I can read more of it. It's very, very beautiful to see that I've affected a life in a positive way. And he said, reflecting on this experience has given me the desire to reach out and help others. I look forward to the day that I can support others in more significant ways. And he goes on, in the meantime, my wife and I do what we can to serve our community and to promote unity and patriotism. This type of kindness and generosity that you have shown is what our nation truly needs if we are ever to be healed. As a nation, we cannot be tricked into believing that charity can be mandated by the government. Words cannot express the gratitude I have for your selfless gift, Dr. Savage. There is no reason or requirement that you had to give us this money. There is no accolade that comes from charitable giving except for inner peace and knowing you've done something to help someone in need. I just wanted to point out whether you realize it or not that you're acting as God's agent when you selected my essay. You answered my prayer. Thank you for your generosity. I wish you the best, and may God continue to bless you, Dr. Savage. Warmest regards, Curtis Buzzfield, Butterfield, Civil Engineering, Boise State University. I think it's a very beautiful, heartfelt um, thank you note in a way. I have a few others. I'll read maybe one a week on the program this week so that you understand that there is hope for the future, that not all of our young people are being brainwashed into left-wing socialist zombies. And if I've made a little difference in changing the lives of just five who knows what they may do in terms of what changes they may uh, make for this great nation of ours. This is the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-407-282. What else is in the headlines? Uh, I'm not talking about Ivanka. It's enough already. It's enough already with Ivanka. I didn't vote for Ivanka. I'm tired of Ivanka everywhere I turn. May I say that I'm tired of it already? Can we move on already with the, with the, with the variety show? I am sick of it. I voted for Donald Trump because of his policies which reflected my views. I didn't vote for his family to be running America. I've told you before it borders on nepotism. I've said that before and I'll say it again. Now, as far as the, the, the headline of the New York Times uh, standing by the Trump assassination play and Time Warner still funding it and CNN supporting such a thing, that's, that's an outrage. That certainly should be uh, uh, eliminated. And if we can get rid of that skank comedian, they could certainly get rid of this play, public theater over a play depicting a Trump assassination. Let me ask all of you dumb liberals out there, what if a public theater had done a play depicting an assassination of Barack Obama? You would have gone crazy. Every expletive known to mankind would have been spewing out of your earlobes. No. What goes around comes around. It's time to stop this. So look at the good news out there. What is the good news? We have, a, you know, the unemployment rate is down. The employment rate is up. There's good things happening. But I think Trump needs to grow up in the presidency. I, I think he needs to stop tweeting. I think he needs to dump a number of people around him like Kellyanne Conway. I've told you that before. I think these people are an embarrassment and a disgrace to his administration. And I think they bring him down. The more they appear, the worse he looks. They're not doing him any favor. Now, I don't expect to get another ice cream summit for this, di for this tirade, but it doesn't matter. What I say is what I say. I call him as I see him. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Dr. Savage, back with you today. Let's talk about blood flow just for a moment. We all know that healthy circulation is critical, especially as we get older. There's a way to support healthy blood flow, and that's by getting enough dietary nitrates into your body, which convert into nitric oxide. Super Beets is the most convenient way to get these dietary nitrates. One scoop in water or a smoothie and you're all set. This is the secret to helping support healthy circulation, healthy blood pressure levels. You see, Super Beets works three times faster to give you results you can feel, and it tastes great. It's all about blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. I take Super Beets every day. I feel the energy and stamina it gives me within 20 minutes, and I want you to feel it too. You can get a 30-day supply free. It comes with your first order and is backed by a money-back guarantee. You're also going to get a free book, Beat the Odds, and free nitric oxide indicator strips so you can see the differences for yourself. And you get free shipping. 
So if you want to get this beautiful product, and you love the results that you feel that you're going to be guaranteed or you're going to get your money back, all you got to do is call 800-481-0504. That's 800-481-0504. Or go to savagelovesbeats.com. Write it down. That's savagelovesbeats.com. And now on to the callers. Mike on KSFO. Mike, what's your topic? Uh, just Donald Trump tweeting, Dr. Savage. I, I think it's in his best interest to keep tweeting because I think that's the only way any of his message gets out to the the masses. I agree with you that he ought to be on your show on occasion. Wait, wait, I, no, I didn't say he should be on my show. I didn't ask for him on the show, nor am I begging him to be on the show. That ship has sailed. Uh, I totally disagree with you on tweeting. I guess that's why you're calling. I think it diminishes his stature as the president, and I think it lowers the likelihood that people will follow his advice. Tweeting is for 11-year-olds, not for adults, let alone for a president of the United States, and it's time to stop. That's my opinion. Now, you respectfully disagree, and I respectfully disagree with you. What has he achieved through his tweeting other than to piss everybody off? I think just to stay in touch with the people a little bit. How many people do you know of? How many people over 40 read, read Twitter? Well, I do not. I'm not on that account. I'm not on Facebook. All right, so there you go. You're not on it yourself yet. You say he should keep doing it. So who's reading that that stuff? I, the only people I, reading the tweets are people in the media who are looking to make a bozo out of him. They're the only people who are reading his tweets are people who want to make a schmendrick out of him. He's making a disastrous mistake, and it's time for Ivanka to get control of her dad dad. Thank you for the call. Phone number 855-407-282. Okay, so now we're back to the issue of the state. But there's other topics I want to talk about on the program. Let's go into all of the other stories that are out there. Uh, Sessions, upcoming testimony, I could care less, not important. Senate Republicans to repeal parts of Obamacare and health care bill, boring. The House is ready to go heavily into tax reform. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Let's see when it happens. Trump is going to Cuba. Well, not to Cuba, but President Trump will fly to Miami on Friday this week to outline his new Cuba policy. And this I totally agree with. He's going to reinstate the limits on travel and trade with that communist nation, the travel and trade limits that were lifted by the communist Barack Obama. It's a big story. And America first has real meaning. And that meaning is to prevent our money from going to this virulently anti-American criminal enterprise called the uh, single-man enterprise of Cuba. No, we should starve it to death until they have democracy in Cuba. Trump is 100% right to reverse what the uh, president before him did. Meanwhile, the madman in North Korea, whatever happened to him? Well, they're continuing to launch test missiles. Uh, New weapon systems that are being tested include a super-accurate short-range ballistic missile. People are worried that if North Korea can develop a warhead capable of handling the extreme heat of reentry, he could toast some parts of the United States. Now, that's a real problem that the media ought to be paying attention to instead of Donald Trump. Now, here's another one. A GI Bill for kids of military families. Isn't that nice? Isn't that great? The, the li- no limits to Uncle Sam's generosity. And you wonder why the country is bankrupt. Daily Signal reporter Jarrett Stepman writes that 35% of military personnel surveyed said unhappiness with their child's education was a critical factor in their decision whether to remain or stay in the armed services. And so if uh, they want to stay in the armed services, they have to send their kids to public schools. Well, so what's the problem with that? Well, I guess the people in the military now want private school for their children. And so now the communists in the Republican Party are redirecting $1.3 billion from the Impact Aid Program to go directly to military families' education savings accounts. Isn't that wonderful? There's no limit, no limit whatsoever to the generosity of the socialist government of the United States of America. Christopher on KKOH in Reno. Line one, go ahead, please. 
Hi, Mr. Savage. It's such a pleasure to actually ever get to talk to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. So what's on your mind? So one, one thing that's on my mind is with the Twitter stuff with Trump, I think that is one thing that can actually be his downfall if he doesn't watch himself with it. I, myself, am 35 years old, born in 82, so I'm, an, I'm the first of the millennials, apparently, even though I don't agree with the millennials and being that way myself at all. I have never, ever read Twitter. I have never used Twitter. I barely even use Facebook because I think all of it's- That's what I'm trying to say. The only people who read Twitter are the, are the schmucks in the media. They tweet each other as if they're important to each other. So Trump is now joining the parade of the morons in the media by tweeting to them just to provoke, provoke them and poke them in the eye. It's stupid. He's got to stop it or his presidency is going to go up in smoke. That's my opinion. It's as clear as that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Somebody has to stop him and take that toy away from him. That's all my opinion. You know, there's a lot of criticism of the president, and I'm not one of those critics, but this behavior is juvenile. End the story. That's the way I see it. I call him the way I see him. Let the chips fall where they may. Goodbye, ice cream. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Oh, what an hour. Shift gears going into hour three for the last couple of hours. I've been talking about should Puerto Rico become a state pro and con. Let's not call no more on that for now. I read some st- savage scholarship winners and their thank yous and how the scholarship changed their lives. I've asked you, do you think McCain and Pelosi are senile? Should they be removed from office because of this obvious senility in their inability to remember where they are and what they're saying? And uh, then I ended it with... I think an off-the-cuff statement that I think Trump should stop using Twitter. I'm sick of it. It diminishes him. It diminishes the presidency. It's not pleasant to see this behavior. And um, the only people who seem to relate to Twitter are those in the media with regard to the president. Trump has 32.1 million Twitter followers, according to what I am seeing. I don't know if it's true. I don't know how many of these are real or false. All of these, this data, all these metrics that I see on Twitter, I think are false. I don't care if he has 400 million Twitter followers. He is the president of the United States. He's not a nine-year-old with an iPhone in a a laundry room somewhere. What do you think about that? Do you think that Trump should stop tweeting? Yes or no? I don't think I've ever done this question, by the way. Yes or no? Because I think it's a disaster, and I've said so before. The impulsiveness of the president is evidenced by some of his tweets, which are counterproductive. The object here is to get things done, not to insult people. And the game of insulting people is is long over. It's old already. We can all insult people day and night. But at a certain point, you have to do something beyond insulting them, like make things happen. Now, many of you are calling and disagreeing with me. KLIF, Joseph, Dallas, Texas. Hello, Michael. Uh, first time caller here. It's an honor to talk to you. And yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, it's okay for President Trump to tweet. He just needs to be logical and think before he tweets. And because he hasn't done any of that so far, that that's why he should either really limit his tweeting or not do it at all until he learns how to properly do it in a way that'll get a great, good message out there. I don't think he's made a, an accurate transition from the private sector to the presidency. And I think that this Twittering thing is part of that um, lack of transition. 
in plain English, and I thank you for joining the conversation. WFTL, Michael, to tweet or not to tweet, that is the question. Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. Pleasure to talk with you. Not tweet. You are absolutely correct. It's moronic. Number one, the reasons behind it are only people reading his tweets, in my humble opinion, are his enemies. Isn't, I don't know, I'm a Trump supporter. I know many Trump supporters. None of them read his tweets. Thank He's you. Neither every- do I. I don't read the tweets. I read about him in the liberal newspapers who try to make a mockery of him. So why is he giving them stuff to destroy himself with? He's letting everybody know what he's thinking. Why? Why would you let anybody know what you're thinking? They're all his enemies. Makes no sense whatsoever. Well, let's ask a deeper psychological question. Why is Trump continuing to tweet when so many of his ardent supporters, myself included, are advising him against it? Why does he keep doing it? His handlers. He doesn't have the proper people around him. You see, I thought when they brought in this new lawyer, the tweeting would stop. That's what I thought, too. But it hasn't happened. He needs- yeah, and I'll, you know, Trump gave a couple of speeches that should go down in history as actually great speeches. He gave a great speech in Saudi Arabia. He gave a couple of great speeches since he's been, become president. The man is fabulous when he's controlled and he's on script and he reads one of the scripts, or let's say speeches that have been written for him, as all presidents have speeches written for him. He is very appealing. Have you yet to see a an appearance by the president with the presidential seal in front of him in the Oval Office? Has he ever done one of them yet? I haven't seen it. Well, that's what's missing. He has the wrong people advising him. I should say the... The, the enemies within, the Brutuses, are misadvising him. If I were advising the president, and I'm not, I would recommend that he stop tweeting, number one, he limit his, personal, his public appearances, number two, and that he only be seen in the Oval Office with the presidential seal in front of him, reading prepared speeches, period, end of story. That would be my advice. WG Day, GDJ Radio in New York City, Uh, Chris, line two, go ahead. Your opinion, please. Mike, I've been trying to get this in for a long time. He's got to stop the tweeting and move to the uh, weekly fireside chat at this point until things get stabilized. All right, so we agree, Chris. I mean, we're commonsensical people here. We're his supporters, and we're saying cut it out, aren't we? Yes. All right, well, what more do we need to say? Let's see what the other people have to say. Some of you agree that he should keep tweeting. You like him. David on WABC, you like the tweets? Tell us why. Hey, uh, Dr. Savage, long-time listener, first-time caller. I I just think with the 32 million people that are following, they're not all crazies. And uh, a lot of the time, those people, they're getting their news facts from uh, his thought process. They're they're looking at the way he thinks and and what he says, and I think those tweets are valuable. I, I, I look at Twitter. I might not respond, but I'm still looking at what he's saying. And if you go back to it, you know, the whole Tea Party and everybody that was out there in the beginning, they all they were all following on Twitter. I mean, they're, they're following him. Why, why does he keep doing what he did during the campaign when he's way past the campaign and he's now in trouble as a president? I mean, no matter what we may say, his numbers are not very good. And so he's got to change something. And the easiest thing to change is to stop acting like an adolescent with the tweeting. I, I, uh, you mean you mean there's no other way for a president to get his message out other than using a, a device that nine-year-olds use? Well, let's think about it. Is ABC News, CBS, NBC, are they going to... All right, all right, let's talk about it. Why does he subject himself to these left-wing fanatics? Why does he give interviews to guys like Lester Holt, George Stephanopoulos? Why does he ignore those people who put him in power while licking the boots of those who hate him and look to trip him up? Who's advising him to do that? Not anybody that's handling him appropriately, but I'll tell you... No, not anybody who wants him to have a successful presidency. I have said before, and I will say it again, Donald Trump, fire your communications director and your entire communications team and get loyalists on your side because they're setting you up for a fall. Every one of them has a knife in their hand behind their back. They're all Brutuses. How much more clear can I be? That's my opinion. Now, there are other ways for him to get his message out. That's called very limited speaking. 
His ratings would go up the less he spoke rather than the more he spoke. This is a product of narcissism. And, you know, it's not easy for me to say so, but we all know this. Everyone in the media is a narcissist without exception, myself included. Or we wouldn't be in the media. Okay, we love to see ourselves or hear ourselves speak. That's number one. But the same is true for politicians. You take senile people like McCain or Pelosi. Let's say they have pre-senile dementia. There's no question that their brains have changed with age. And unfortunately for them, they can't control or hide the negative changes in their, in their, in their gray matter, whatever is left of it. And most of it's become pink matter over the years of their communist philosophizing. But whatever is left of Pelosi's gray matter or McCain's gray matter uh, is showing, it's showing signs of wear and tear. It's like any part of a car that's worn out needs to be replaced. But with humans, you can't replace the brain. But if you're a politician and you see that you're slipping, what you do is you listen to people around you who say, Nanny, you just called President Trump, President Bush. The people are laughing at you. It's time for you to stop it. They don't listen either. See, here's the problem. And I think that the issue is that of aging politicians. Many of them are rigid and set in their ways, and they're not flexible enough to admit that they ever make a mistake. This is a real problem. Successful people generally want to be right about everything. Well, no one can be right about everything except talk show hosts like me. But politicians think that they're right about everything. And even when they're wrong, they'll never admit it. Because if they become rich like a billionaire, they figure I'm smarter than the other guy. I know more than they do. I don't need anyone's advice. I got where I am by thinking of my own thoughts and doing my own thing. This is a disaster for a public figure. And uh, if you surround yourself with yes men, you're not doing yourself a favor. It's that simple. Uh, WVFT in Florida. Chris, thank you so much. What's on your mind? Your opinion, please. Uh, I say no on the tweeting, and I wonder if he was still in the private sector and he was about to close a huge land deal, would he be tweeting insults about the opposition to his land deal? Mm, very well put. Yeah, in other words, if you're trying to create a coalition in a bill, what you do is you don't attack the, the opposition, do you? Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, you make a very good point. That's as simple as that. And uh, now we got some other people on the other side, I guess. And that would be WNTW in Virginia. Ken on line eight. Go ahead. Your opinion. Should should Trump tweet or not to tweet? That's the question. Okay. No uh, and yes. And no is the, bull, the uh, fighting, the uh, playground fighting is ridiculous. But information about what the administration is doing for the people and, and all of us to, uh, and, and to, that he's accomplished. I get that on the tweet. I am a tweeter. I'm 72 years old. But so I, wait, so in other words, if he said unemployment rate down, we're doing great, that would be a tweet that you'd approve of. I would approve of things like that. I just got on and found some things that he did that I'm not getting on the news, or I cannot stand to watch the news for 12 hours a day on television, which I do not do anymore. You know, I got to tell you something, and I'm, I'm going to tell it straight up. I don't watch any cable news at all. I won't, I won't watch Fox. I don't watch any of them. Now, I don't watch any of them anymore. I did in the past. I used to be obsessed with these channels. A few years ago, I watched them constantly before a show. I do not even turn my TV on to watch them at all anymore for a number of reasons. It's not so much because the reportage is bad. It's because the election is over and I know where everyone stands. They're predictable. They're all going to attack Trump, attack Trump, and attack Trump. It's boring. It's like the Daily News. Every time you open this paper in New York, it's another Trump attack. And you become... You become sensitized to it. And people, the minute they look at it, they know it's going to be another attack. They won't read the paper. They won't listen to the television station. So enough is enough already. In other words, the Trump bashing is old. It's boring. Move on. But his worst enemy is himself. In plain English, he's got to stop tweeting except about his positive accomplishments. And that should be very, very few and far between back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, 
We're talking about Trump and Twitter and this and that. It's all nice to talk about. But if you look at the Muslim invasion of Europe and what they're doing in their ghettos, it's enough to make you really come to your senses. There's a story up on michaelsavage.com that I was very reluctant to read to you. But in the few minutes that remain in this segment, I, I feel obligated to tell you about the extreme cruelty to a- animals that is occurring in Muslim ghettos in, in Denmark in this case. Are you ready for it? Because it's very graphic. Heads are being pulled off cats. Kittens are found cut up with their intestines hanging out of their body. When animal protection services tried to go into the ghettos, the Muslim ghettos, the Islamic cultural Muslim ghetto, their ambulance was attacked by the wonderful sacred immigrants. This is how a woman working with the Danish Animal Protection describes some of the horrible treatment of animals in the Muslim-dominated area of Osmos, a suburb of the third largest city in Denmark. I have it on michaelsavage.com. It's linked up from Jihad Watch. It's all true because there's a video of it. The worst thing I saw was a bunch of kittens crawling around with their bowels hanging out because they had their bellies cut open. In Volsmos, the degree of abuse for cats is worse than elsewhere in Denmark. It is usually children below 10 years of age who abuse the animals. Shall I read more of it? Well, I know it makes you very uncomfortable, especially those of you who are progressives. But here is what an animal protection services woman in Denmark wrote. A group of young men, young men, attacked a female worker from animal protection services when she entered their ghetto to pick up a cat that had been injured. The young man stopped the animal ambulance, opened the ambulance door, stole the ignition key, tore at the woman's hair and shouted in her face. The ambulance had its taillights smashed. The car was bumped. The woman had to leave the sick and dying cat and flee for her own safety. Since this attack, the Danish Animal Protection Agency no longer sends people into this Muslim ghetto to help abused animals. It's all on film, showing the locals attacking the poor woman, tearing at her uncovered hair and forcing her to leave the area. This is uh, multiculturalism for those of you who don't know what's going on, those of you who are brain dead or drug addicted. I don't know what it's going to take until you yourself become aware of what you, you are wishing for. It's on michaelsavage.com. It's next to an article of the boxer Daniel Franco, who has been put into a medically induced coma with a brain injury from a single punch in a fight. Now, this is an interesting story. When you see a highly conditioned boxer like Daniel Franco, he's a featherweight. He's fighting another man, Jose Harrow, Saturday night at the Winter Vegas Casino in Sloan, Iowa. And it's telecast on CBS Sports Network. He's knocked down in the eighth round. 25 years old, very fit young man. He gets hit one punch from the other fighter in the head. Down he goes like a sack of potatoes. He's sent to Mercy Medical Center in Sioux City, Iowa, for emergency surgery to stop two brain bleeds. And then he's put into a medically induced coma. Doctors had to open his skull to relieve the pressure and repair two small veins that were bleeding. What is the point of my reading this story? The point is quite simple. Many of us civilians out there think we're tough guys. Many of us don't understand what it's like to actually be punched in the head, especially by a young man who's very strong. One punch can kill you. So the next time you get into a, let us say, road rage incident or a a verbal uh, altercation with someone, think twice before you open your big mouth because you never know what the consequences may be of that outburst. Take it from someone who knows. It's always best to walk away and leave justice for another day. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So let's look at it from the point of view of why people are arguing that Puerto Rico should be made a state. Well, duh, if you're a welfare state and the people are on unemployment, they don't work, 50% of them or near, near that amount, of course they want to become a state. Not only will they get welfare 
uh, increased benefits that they already buy. By the way, they get the benefits right now. Oh, yeah, food stamps, you name it. You have any idea what kind of numbers get food stamps over there in Puerto Rico? Now, you want to increase welfare payments to them in Puerto Rico, and you want to give them statehood so they can get a senator, two senators, and seven congressmen and vote themselves a raise? Are you people crazy? You may as well get the coffin out for the country if you let the Jake Tappers and the Wolf Blitzes and the New York Times and the Washington Post owned by Amazon Bezos, the beast of Amazon, you let them keep it up, America will be put into a coffin. I'm sick of it all. Now they want to make Puerto Rico a state? Are you out of your mind? You want to give them two senators to the left of uh, Nancy Pelosi? You want to give them seven congressmen to the left of... uh, Oscar Lopez Rivera, to the left of the dead Fidel Castro, you idiots, you. So what do we need Puerto Rico for? Ask yourself that question. Let's say we cut it off completely as a territory. Say goodbye. You're free. You want independence. All of you Oscar Lopez Riveras, you want an independent nation. God bless you. Make an independent nation. Become another Cuba in the Caribbean. And let's see how the people fare under you. Let's see how they would fare, the Puerto Rican people, under a communist as they are faring, for example, in Cuba, as they are faring in South America, have you forgotten what's going on in the north of South America? You forgot what's going on down there? In Venezuela, they're fighting over a salami. They're killing zoo animals for food because your socialism is so wonderful. You know, I keep hearing young people who are stupid, dumber than you've ever seen, talk about socialism with stars in their eyes because they've never visited these states, uh, these nations that are run by socialists. And then I realized something in bed last night. Socialism cannot work in a nation full of lazy people. And that goes for most nations on earth. What you don't understand, most of you don't understand this, is that man is inherently a lazy animal. I don't think you understand it. This is not a racial thing. It's not a a gender thing. It's not a gay thing. It's not a straight thing. So put away your hatred for a minute. Man is by nature lazy. He'd rather do nothing and collect a check for doing nothing. You'd like to sit home, drink alcohol, smoke marijuana, do drugs, go to a dance at night. In other words, do nothing. Just be lazy. That's what man would like to do. Most men are lazy. Anywhere on earth, they sit around doing nothing. That's what the third world is. Is In addition to struggling for food, they, they do nothing with themselves. So if you apply socialism or give them the opportunity to have socialism, of course they'll say yes. They want all of the money that the people who are creative and productive produce to be given to them. And then they don't understand they'll wind up eating themselves and have nothing left. As Margaret Thatcher said, socialism is a wonderful system. Wonderful indeed until you run out of other people's money. But you can't explain that to a stoner in his 20s. They have no idea what the real world is like. They spent the last six years in college living on their mother's couch, getting stoned, chasing sex, and they know nothing about the real world. Then they go out to get a job, and they don't get a job because they have no, no skills whatsoever. So what do they do? They blame race. They blame sex. They blame this. They blame that. But it's because they have no marketable skills. Nobody wants a deadbeat in their, in their corporation. You don't even want them working for you in a delicatessen. They can't even make a sandwich right. They get, they get fumbled up. You ask them to put corned beef on a, on a piece of bread, and the corned beef winds up on the floor, and the mustard is in their hair. Then they go home crying. Then they scream they want socialism. That's what's coming out of the colleges today. They don't understand that socialism is loved by people who are lazy bums because they get something for nothing. So now you've got it. Let's take it back to the Puerto Rican parade, if you don't mind. Oscar Lopez Rivera, a terrorist convicted of uh, many, many things, transporting firearms, seditious conspiracy against the U.S. government, sentenced to 70 years in prison. Obama commutes his sentence in January because Obama loves communist terrorists. You know what I'm saying? You you get that one? Leader of the FALN. The question is, the parade was an embarrassment to New Yorkers, even of the Puerto Rican people themselves. They embarrassed themselves. That's question number one in the Savage Nation. Number two. Number two, McCain. Do you think McCain should be removed from the Senate because of his clear and present senility? The man is crazy. Anti-Trump Senator John McCain, he's supposedly a Republican, according to the article I'm reading on Breitbart, and I'm pretty sure it's correct because it was also reported in other papers, he told a left-wing newspaper that 
McCain now, believes American leadership was better under Obama than under Trump. Now, this man is either senile or a Benedict Arnold, one or the other, but I think he should be removed. I guess you can't remove a Benedict Arnold. Now, what about Nancy Pelosi? Should Nancy Pelosi be removed for senility? I'm going to play a soundbite for you to show you how sick our Congress has become when you've got a Nancy Pelosi who confuses President Trump with President Bush and continues on her script as though nothing happened. And I'm asking you again, should Pelosi be removed? And I don't know if the 25th Amendment applies to her, but it could apply to her and McCain. A lot of the left-wingers are now banding about, oh, remove Trump under the 25th Amendment. They're all repeating the same. They're reading the same immigraph sheet put out by the Democrat Party. Well, I would apply this to Nancy Pelosi and John McCain. Should Pelosi be removed according to the fact that she's mentally deranged? Listen to her confusing again, Trump with Bush, in clip one. New Yorkers have said to me, those who've had business dealings with him, he operates this way. First, he tries to charm you. President Bush tries to charm you. If that doesn't work, Trump. he tries to bully you. If that doesn't So the work, reporter says Trump, and she doesn't even, she doesn't miss a beat. Keep going. He walks away from the deal. And if that doesn't work, he sues you. So charm, bully, abandon, sue. I guess that's her MO over in San Francisco. That's how she got where she is and stays where she is. Charm, bully, abandon, and sue. Very clever, Nancy. But when you confuse President Trump with President Bush, not for the first time, people are asking, is it time for you to hang up your shingle and go home and practice your meatballs or your lasagna or whatever it is you might do? Global warming. Maybe write essays on global warming for sixth graders in San Francisco. Now, I'm asking again, statehood for Puerto Rico, yes or no? It's a question that affects the nation. It's very simple. Should Puerto Rico become a state? I'm very clear on it. Well, let me answer it to you this way, since many of you are brain dead, or as brain dead as Mayor de Blasio. Uh, you want to give Puerto Rico two senators? Do you think that they will be far left, center, or far right? Do you want to give Puerto Rico seven Congress people? You think they're going to be leftists and push the leftist, socialist, Islamist agenda? Or do you think they're going to push the American agenda? And while we're talking about Puerto Rico, what a beautiful place it is. What a great place it is where a third of the population of Puerto Rico gets food stamps. One third of the population that was in 2012, God knows what it is today. One third of the population is on food stamps, probably much higher after eight years um, of Obama. Food stamps to Puerto Rico. Now, the employment rate in uh, Puerto Rico is very interesting. And what is the unemployment rate in Puerto Rico? The U.S. Congress gave Puerto Rico a short-term Medicaid payment of $300 million um, this year. That's a short-term payment. Puerto Rico has $70 billion in debt, a 45% poverty rate, unemployment rate twice that of the United States. Who would want to give Puerto Rico statehood other than Charles Schumer? Other than Charles Schumer. Now, let's go back to the Puerto Rican Day Parade, which occurred over the weekend. How the victims of this terrorist, Oscar whatever his name is, Oscar Lopez Rivera, who served... 36 years in prison for being the mastermind of bombings and terrorist events. And who do you think commuted his sentence? Barry the Snake Obama. Barry the Snake Obama commuted Lopez Rivera's sentence in January of this year. He was the leader of the FALN. What is the FALN? Consider them the PLO of Puerto Rico. That's who they are. The group's deadliest attack was in 1975 at the Francis Tavern in New York City, which killed four people, including Frank Connor, who was only 33 years of age at the time. I saw his son, Joe Connor, on Fox News about how outraged he is that de Blasio and the communists in the Puerto Rican community would march this character at the front of their parade. Joe Connor said Oscar Lopez wanted to enslave the Puerto Rican people into another Cuba. Now, of course, there was good news to this Puerto Rican Day Parade, which is that half of its corporate sponsors dropped out as a result of this terrorist being put into the, uh, the parade on the float. Governor Andrew Cuomo stepped out at the last minute 
The NYPD police commissioner, James O'Neill, boycotted the parade. Hispanic police groups dropped out. And yet, the parade organizers stood by glorifying this terrorist. This National Freedom Hero Award, by the way, was never given to anybody in this parade. Did you hear what I just said? They made up a new award for this terrorist that Obama commuted the sentence of. Now, how deceitful was Obama? Just for a moment, I have to go off script of my own script for a moment. Obama makes believe he was a man of the people, a man of the terrorist, a man of the downtrodden. Obama just got a $70, $70 million advance for a book, him and his wife, two books, $70 million. He just spent holidays on private islands in the Caribbean, everywhere you can name it, millionaires and billionaires are his best friends. When are you stupid people going to wake up to the fact that these liberal demagogues are not your friends, they are your puppet masters? So I'm asking you a simple question. Do you want or do you think Puerto Rico should be given citizenship? I'm very clear on it. You will have to be a lunatic to make Puerto Rico a state, not a citizenship, and that's in sorry, statehood. You want to give everyone in Puerto Rico citizenship? What do we gain from it? It's a basket case. It is a basket case of a population. What would we gain by it? We'd gain seven congressmen who would be far left. We gain two senators who would make Chuck Schumer look like a conservative Republican. Let's, I'm going to say something controversial now. I've got to be a little careful. Let's see, what other uh, ethnicities have parades? The Irish, the Irish, the St. Paddy's Day parade. What if at the height of the IRA bombings, the Irish Day Parade, the St. Paddy's Day Parade, took the leader of Sinn Féin, if I pronounced it correctly, and I hope I did, and put him in the top of the parade. Now, there are arguments to be made that they are freedom fighters in Ireland, by the way. If you were to ask me which side I'm on, I think the British are a horrible people for what they did to Ireland, personally. And I personally think Ireland should be an independent nation, but no one's asking my opinion. I'm only a talk show host. But you take a convicted FAL and leader like Oscar Lopez Rivera, who was 35 years behind bars for his ties to the group. He's commuted by the terrorist president himself, the last terrorist president we had, who disguised himself as a man of the people, then cashes in a $70 million book advance. He gets, what, $400,000 a speech, hangs out at Necker Island with the richest people on earth, flies on private jets, and you people buy the crap that he's a man of the people. I, what are you on, Crackalandia? You come from Crackalandia? I don't know what country you people live in. You have such distorted views of right and wrong. And who's on your side? I don't understand how poor people can become stupid. Not all poor people are stupid, by the way. I came from poor people who were very smart. They didn't have opportunity and they never got lucky in this country. It doesn't mean they were stupid. Let me tell you that right now. The point is, is that you don't have to go to college to be intelligent. And I've seen real intelligence amongst uneducated people. Just listen to talk radio all day long. You can see that any, any way you turn. You got high school dropouts who are posing as experts in everything in the world. And uh, that's unto itself shows you how smart they are. It's astounding what they can get away with. But having said that, look at what people would vote for in this country if they're given an opportunity. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Let's see what else is in the news. George Soros has a son. His son is Alex Soros. In my opinion, if Alex did not have a father like George, Alex would be serving coffee in a coffee house in the East Village if he could hold on to that job. But that did not stop up Chuck Schumer, Bigfoot Schumer, from having drinks with George Soros' son. Now, why is that? Money. Just follow the money. According to finance records, campaign finance records, Alex Soros, the son of Frankenstein Soros, Gave more than $4.5 million to Democratic campaign committees and PACs in 2016, of which the Senate Majority PAC uh, of Senator Harry Reid was the largest benefactor with checks totaling 3.5 mil. Of the 4.5 mil, $127,000 went to the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. Well, I don't have to read you all the numbers. In other words, this rich man's son, Alex Soros' son, the guy who made his fortune on betting against companies, 
the guy who made his fortune by betting against currencies. In other words, an all-around speculator of the worst order has a son who uh, gives out a lot of money. And he gives money to people like who? Hillary Clinton, Keith Ellison, and of course, uh, Chuck Schumer, who we had a drink with. Nothing wrong with it. It's not illegal, but gives you an example of another phony out there who says, oh, yeah, you save it for the poor. Here's another story out of Sweden. Those of you who love Muslims and Islam, sex attacks at Swedish festivals have risen 1,000%. And you see moronic liberals standing there out there saying, welcome refugees in Italy now. Italy's taking them in by the tens of thousands when their unemployment rate is through the roof. The poor, the poor young people in Italy have no jobs. They're bringing in boatloads of immigrants from Africa, mainly from Libya. Now, I want to talk about that for a minute. Who was it who ordered the assassination of Gaddafi, the strongman of Libya? Well, remember the tape. I have an answer for that question as well. It's the brain that never sleeps. It was Hillary Clinton, I think, who was involved with a little bit of that regime change. And after she whacked Gaddafi or had her friends whack Gaddafi, she had a little cocktail party with her girlfriends where she said, we came and we saw he died. <laughs> and all the girls laugh. It's not a laughing matter because before Gaddafi, Muhammad Gaddafi was whacked by the United States government, he begged this government not to kill him for one good reason. Of course, he wanted to live. But he said, I warn you, if you kill me, you will destroy whatever stability is left of this nation of Libya. And it will descend into the chaos of a Somalia where warlords will rule the nation. That is exactly what has happened because of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. That is exactly why tens of thousands of Africans are flooding into Europe. This entire refugee crisis was created by the misguided insanity of the, of the illiberal left. Now you got the rest of that story. Savage.